on the banks of the deep dark waters of Loch Ness sits Urquhart Castle, having watched over the loch for centuries. Everyone knows the stories about Loch Ness, it's one of the most famous stretches of water in the entire world. And for good reason. First off, it's quite frankly enormous, 23 miles long and over 200 meters deep. It's so big that it contains more fresh water than all of the lakes in England and Wales combined. It's dark and ominous and genuinely terrifying. It owes its dark colour to the high peat concentration from the surrounding land, but that doesn't make it any less unsettling. If there's a monster lurking anywhere, it's most definitely here. But none of that seemed to faze John Cobb, a wealthy trader from London. He used his wealth to fund a rather exhilarating hobby of his, speed racing. He already held the land speed record, having achieved 394 miles per hour at the Bonneville Speedway in Utah, in the rather futuristic looking Railton Mobile Special. But now he wanted to take to the water, and Loch Ness was the perfect place, due to its length and how straight it is. And so he spent £15,000 building his vessel, the Crusader, the equivalent of just over £300,000 today. It was a truly impressive boat, jet propelled and 6,000 horsepower. He named it the Crusader because in the old days, a Crusader was a man who liked to get away from his office and have some fun. Towards the end of summer 1952, Cobb and his team spent six weeks at the lock. Each day at dawn, they waited for the weather to clear and the water to be still, and then the Crusader was lowered into the water and towed out to the centre of the lock. All other boats were cleared from the water, as well as any debris such as floating wood or anything that would disturb the surface. It needed to be perfectly still, a condition referred to as jelly calm. Even the slightest disturbance could prove to have disastrous consequences at such high speed. The current record was 178.49 miles per hour, held by the American Stanley Sayers, a record set only in July that year. And as the trials progressed, it looked certain that Cobb was going to beat it. Any official attempt required a measured mile, a specific mile-long stretch of water where the official timekeepers would watch from either end on the shore. And the boat had to complete a run in both directions for the speed to count, in order to make up for any variables such as wind direction. On the morning of the 29th of September, the conditions were far from perfect, and by 9.30am had significantly worsened. But by late morning, the surface conditions had improved drastically, and at 11.25am, John Cobb and the Crusader were once again lowered into the lock. And at just after midday, John Cobb reached 206.89 miles per hour, far exceeding the current record. But then as he began to slow down, the Crusader bounced ever so slightly before somersaulting and being instantly ripped to pieces. Spectators say there was no audible explosion, just an eerie and terrifying silence. The support boats reached the scene just in time to recover him from the dark waters, before the Crusader sank deep down to the bottom of Loch Ness. John Cobb was still alive when they pulled him from the water, but died shortly afterwards, most likely of shock. And what's more, his record didn't even count because he hadn't completed a second run. So what exactly happened? Well there's video footage from the accident, and it's even on YouTube today if you're inclined to watch it. As it was slowing down, the Crusader appears to hit a small unexplained wake, just big enough to cause the vessel to start violently shaking and then be torn apart. And of course, given the location, it's pretty inevitable that people would start suggesting that this was the work of the monster. But a much simpler theory was put forward. In his book, The Loch Ness Story, Nicholas Witchell writes, It is now accepted that the ripples were the remnants of the reflected wake from the first run, slowly settling on the surface. But this cannot be true. For some reason it was widely reported that the accident happened during the second run of the measured mile, which never actually took place. Rather, the accident occurred as Cobb was slowing down after the first and only run, therefore this theory can't be true. Another theory, put forward by the Loch Ness project team, who have spent decades researching the lock and the possibility of a monster, is that the small wake was caused by one of Cobb's support boats, and this is generally the accepted theory today. 
But that just doesn't make sense. Everyone knew the risks. The lock was cleared of all boat traffic. There needed to be no wind and the water needed to be mirror calm. They were so incredibly careful and took so many meticulous precautions to avoid any kind of disturbance. It just doesn't make sense that another boat could be in the water, let alone one from his own team. And then in his book, The Leviathans, Tim Dinsdale puts forward the theory that everyone was thinking, the Loch Ness Monster. Look, it's a monster. <laughs> Dinsdale managed to obtain a copy of the original film from the now retired cameraman Jock Gemmell, allowing him to examine it frame by frame. The Crusader, he says, appears to hit a V-shaped wake. On the film, only one line of the V can be seen, leading to many people misidentifying it as the line wake from a boat, when he says it was in fact caused by a large object travelling through the water. I guess we'll never know. Loch Ness is so incredibly vast and still so unexplored. It really is a lost world beneath the surface, and there is so much that we still don't know about it. To give you some kind of perspective on just how gigantic it is, the Crusader wasn't even found until 50 years after the accident, following an 18-month search. Today it remains at the bottom of the lock, at one of its deepest points. It's a massive and inaccessible body of water, dark and with exceptionally low visibility. There could be literally anything down there. And regardless of whether or not there's a monster, Loch Ness is a wonderful and a mysterious place. One of the last great wildernesses of the United Kingdom. As for John Cobb, there was still one place that we needed to visit. So this down here is Inverness and Loch Ness is just below where the map ends. I might have bought the wrong map. We didn't really need a map anyway, all we had to do was follow the road straight. And before long, we found what we were looking for. For John Cobb, Loch Ness is a place of victory. His record might not have officially counted, but he did succeed in becoming the fastest man on water and achieved national glory nonetheless. 